Pastrick, and I apologize if I mispronounced that. No problem, you got it perfect. Welcome. Thank you. you just state your name for the record. Uh, right. My name is William Pastrick, and uh, <clears throat> I'm going to actually deviate uh, from what I have and start with addressing uh, what we just heard. It seems to me that um, they uh, have not only failed to read the law, uh, the police in general, as it currently stands, but apparently even failed to read the bill um, and are just making uh, general statements and throwing red herrings out there. As the bill is currently written, not, not this bill, the law, okay, we can already record them. We can already record in public. There is no reasonable expectation of privacy in public. You cannot record someone if they have a reasonable expectation of privacy, and that reasonable expectation of privacy must be justified. It's clearly not when they're on the job and when they're on public. So we don't really need this bill. <clears throat> the purpose of this bill, in my opinion, okay, because we are going to continue recording them. We are going to continue winning. There are states where they've passed statutes that say exactly the opposite. You may not record police. Those laws are being challenged, and they are going to lose. Okay. What's happening right now is there are lawsuits being filed against several police stations around the state. So in my opinion, the purpose of this modification is to inform the police what they may not do, which is arrest someone for videotaping in public, and thereby save the taxpayers money. Because we already can, we already do, we're going to continue to do it, and they're going to get sued every time they arrest us. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Koster. I, I just have a clarification. You signed up speaking opposed, but I, I'm assuming I, I, you support. I, I oppose as amended. These amendments are, uh, are mostly atrocious. Uh, the, uh, the first one here mentions um, video recording of a, a law enforcement officer specifically. I believe it's already been said that should be all public officials. And um, that's just, again, that's already the case. Um, as far as notification goes, uh, there's problems there. Uh, people have uh, security systems, which also record audio. There's no one there to give notification. Besides, why should someone get notification so they can change their obviously bad behavior and start looking good on camera? They should comport themselves in a respectful manner all the time. Um, uh, the act of recording does not interfere. Well, it's already illegal to interfere, so uh, that's completely unnecessary. That's uh, and, and again, saying that oh, if people can videotape, then they can interfere, they can do all of these other things which are illegal under other statutes. That's like saying uh, if we grant someone a driver's license, they can start driving through people's front yards and running over children because they have a driver's license. No, that's not what it means. Just because you have a, uh, just because they can't arrest someone and charge them with wiretapping does not mean that those people can violate any other laws. They can't, they can't interfere in due process, they can't interfere with an investigation, they can't trespass, they can't harass people. All of those laws stand on their own. Thank you, Mr. Costner, for any questions. See you enough. Appreciate your testimony. Thank you. Okay. And I'll call uh, Seth Pipple. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Attorney Seth Hipple. I'm from Concord. Um, you may have read the Union Leader about the cases in which I've represented uh, various defendants on uh, charged with felonies under uh, the wiretapping law 570A. Um, they were all charged with felonies for openly, non surreptitiously recording police activity in public while those officers were on duty performing their public duties. Uh, you may have also read that my firm recently filed a federal lawsuit against the town of Ware for the arrest of one of those clients. Therefore, as you can imagine, um, I've spent a lot of time looking at this law and have a lot of interest in the outcome of this, uh, this bill. I'll cover three things in my brief testimony. One, <clears throat> why I don't believe passing this bill would actually change the law. Two, why I think the bill is still necessary. And three, why I think it's necessary but not in this form. I am supporting the original language but not the original. Noted. Thank you. First, the law of the land already allows people to record in public. Yes, even with audio. Uh, the First Amendment protects the right to openly record police because obviously what they do is extremely important to the public good. Uh, various federal courts have already upheld this. Um, the First Circuit, the First Circuit Court of Appeals, um, which has jurisdiction over New Hampshire, um, ruled in a case uh, which is noted in the written testimony and cited um, said that the, the right to record uh, video and audio of public officials in public was sufficiently clear, clearly protected in the First Amendment. Um, I also cite cases from the 11th Circuit and from the 9th Circuit. 
also dealing with uh, one of two of those cases dealing specifically with the audio recording of police officers. One of them dealing with the audio and video recording of, um, of public officials who were not police officers. In all of those cases, the court said, no, the First Amendment clearly protects this. Uh, it cannot be criminalized. Now, furthermore, the statute itself does not criminalize people reporting police in public. The reason that there's confusion about this is because the statute uh, was written piecemeal, uh, so it's, it's, not, it's not very clear, and it was also written at a time before we had these handheld reporting devices. If you read the, the first part of the statute, it says that um, you can't make a recording, you can't record oral communication without that party's consent. It seems pretty clear. Okay, well, if you don't have consent, then it's wiretapping. The problem is, is that if you look at the definition of oral communication, and that is RSA 570A1, Roman numeral 2, I'll read it to you. Oral communication means any oral communication uttered by a person exhibiting an expectation, this is the important part, that such communication is not subject to interception under circumstances justifying such expectation. That's pretty much uh, word for word from the federal law. Now, there's a ton of federal jurisprudence on what's known as the reasonable expectation of privacy, which is exactly what, what I just read to you. And that's where it, cases of saying, okay, people, if they're on the sidewalk, they have a reasonable expectation of privacy. And, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of cases. It's very clear that police, not only people in public, but even clear that police officers or other public officials don't have a reasonable expectation of privacy in the way that they perform their duties. In fact, they're accountable to the people. So I don't believe that this law actually, that the law currently actually criminalizes the activity that we're talking about. This may be why no one has ever been convicted that I'm aware of in New Hampshire of these charges. So if it's not illegal, why am I here supporting the bill? Well, there's a major problem in New Hampshire. Right now, I've represented, as I said, two defendants just in the last 12 months alone, charged with felonies. Um, I'll note for the record that I don't, I don't work for free. Uh, so these people are obviously having to drain their personal bank accounts. They're obviously going through a lot of stress. Um, and usually what happens is the cameras are seized when they're arrested. The video, tape, the video footage is, is erased. And if they're lucky, they might have their camera uh, returned. I have been dealing, um, one of my clients was arrested 13 months ago. And her camera has still not been returned. The charges were dropped, I believe, 11 months ago. And she has still not had her camera returned despite two court orders. That's the problem, is that despite the, the law being clear, people are still, there's still, officers will still tell people, you can't record me unless I give you my consent. And a person who doesn't have the wherewithal or the means to hire an attorney, uh, God forbid, I, this may have happened already, but I don't know about it. I hope it hasn't. But it could happen in the future that they take a plea deal. They're scared to death and they say, oh my goodness, I'm going to be a felon. Okay, I'll, I'll take a, a, a plea deal and a, you know, a small fine and a misdemeanor to make this go away when they didn't even break the law in the first place. So this is happening a lot, and it's a pattern. That's why I still think the statute is necessary. Now, why, now the question becomes how, how should we make this change? I have a problem with the current, the current language. You can note that the current language would have made the Rodney King recordings illegal. I think that's a problem. Now, another, another situation that I came up with um, was, uh, imagine a WMUR reporter with a 10-foot um, boom microphone recording, uh, say, let's say, firefighters putting out a fire, and the reporter, in order to stay out of the way, the firefighters <coughs> is standing on YMCA property, private property, right? He would fail almost every single one of those, those provisos that are now in the bill from the House amended version because he's recording firefighters, not police officers. He didn't get their explicit permission. You know, he's not going to go up to all 15 firefighters while they're fighting a fire and say, hey, can I, can I record you? What's going on? No, he's not going to do that. But they don't have a reasonable expectation of privacy. He has that 10 foot boom microphone which is why common sense tells you it's not against, it shouldn't be against the law. Um, and then on top of it, um, he's standing on YMCA property, not public property. So these three provisos could actually hang him. He could actually, you could actually criminalize something that actually isn't criminalized right now. Because what you would do is you would say, um, you know, right now it's not illegal, but then the police are gonna say, well, we have, we have the law, we have what's legal, so that means everything else must be illegal. And I have, I have a problem with that. Um, I, I think simpler is better. Um, it may shock you to hear an attorney say that, but I think that, uh, I think that the change to this would be really simple. Because like I said, I think the law already covers what the, this committee, and what, what the purpose of this bill. If you look on the very last page, the definition of oral communication, which I already read to you, um, 
you see there in bold and italicized, I just added a sentence. And this is not actually changing the law. It's simply clarifying the law so that people can stop getting arrested. Public employees do not have a reasonable expectation of privacy while we're performing their public duties. Now, we all know that already. I'm sure that every reasonable person in this room already agrees that that's true. I'm just saying, state what's already, what we already believe, put it in the law, and we can stop these arrests. Thank you. Uh, I have a question for you. What was your response to Tony Rice's comment about the concern about her serving her public function in her private or in her office? Um, would that, wouldn't that exclude any privacy from that locale? Well, there would be, there would be, um, I, I, I was curious whether she was talking about, like, say, interviewing a defendant. If she was interviewing a defendant in her private office, this change that I'm suggesting would not, um, would not make the recording of that legal because that defendant would not be a public official. So his voice would not be allowed to be recorded. Um, if we wanted to say that public employees do not have a reasonable expectation of privacy while performing their public duties in public, I think that would uh, also be acceptable. Um, what I don't want to do is actually create um, a list of scenarios that are illegal, where, which is what this bill does, where it says, okay, you have to get their consent. And now I'm left to litigate with my clients. Well, did he get her consent with their implicit consent? Does it have to be explicit? Oh, he was in a public area. Well, does that include my front yard because it's right by the street? Or does it have to be the sidewalk? You know, these are the, these are, these are the lawyer's playgrounds that I don't want to see pe innocent people getting caught up in. Thank you very much. Other, qu other questions? See no, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and I move, apologize ahead of time if I mispronounce this, John Lurricker. John Lurricky. Um, thank you, um, Chairman, members of the committee. Um, my name is John Lurricky. I live in Mason. And I also am in favor of the earlier bill, which I haven't actually read, but the idea that it should be there. And one of the things I'd like to speak about is. Um, Article 15 of our Bill of Rights. Article 15 of the Bill of Rights says, every subject shall have a right to produce all proofs that may be favorable to himself, to meet the witnesses against him face to face, and to be heard fully in his defense. If one is to be able to produce the proofs of one's uh, innocence, one obviously has to be able to create them in the first place. If one cannot record an interaction with a public official where one may be accused of a crime, then it's very obvious that one has been deprived. And that, you know, we are, by uh, using the intimidation of this wiretap law, we are depriving our citizens of their rights to record and to have the proofs that they have recorded to use in their own defense in court. Um, you know, I'm, for way too long, we've had institutions that have operated in the dark. Uh, the clergy uh, the sex abuse scandal, which continue to this day in the state, or people who thought, oh, well, no, nobody's ever going to find out. We can always intimidate. We can uh, do so. And the police have, to a great extent, done the same thing. We are going to threaten people with felonies if they just simply provide for their own defense. And I think that, uh, honestly, the law as it exists is null and void just based upon Article 15 of our Constitution. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Brandon Ross. Thank <laughs> you. 